evolution and ecology are two fundamental aspects of biology that are often discussed separately but are very interconnected in our world. First off, we must know the definition of each aspect in order to make those connections. Evolution is defined as the process of diversification of organisms through the process of natural selection. Ecology is the study of the relationships between organisms and their environments. From those simple definitions, you can already see how these interactions can influence a species' behaviors, traits, and ultimately, their evolution. But what does this fish behind me have to do with the relationship between evolution and ecology? One fish makes up an individual. Now, when we have lots of these fish of the same species, we make up a population. When we start mixing populations, like populations of fish and water fleas and algae, we make up a community. Then, when we add abiotic factors to the community, like rocks and sunlight temperature, we make up an ecosystem. Matthew Walsh and his team of researchers from Yale University's Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology set out to show how evolution changes community and ecosystem processes, specifically through the zooplankton fish, the alewife, Alosa pseudoharyngus, and water fleas, Daphnia ambigua, through his experiment. The experiment simulated the environment of three different types of lakes that serve as habitats for the water fleas and algae. The variable in the different environments is the presence or type of alewife fish. One of the environments contained algae and water fleas from lakes with anadromous alewives, or alewives that migrate into the ocean. The Daphnia taken from lakes with anadromous alewives generally grow faster, mature earlier, and produce larger clutches compared to the landlocked lakes, or lakes with no alewives. The earlier maturation and larger cl clutches of the Daphnia from lakes that have the alewives that migrate will have faster population growth, which will result in a faster decline of algal bivass and decrease in the rate of primary production in the experimental mesocosms, or experimental simulations. So what does this really mean? The water fleas from the lakes with migrating alewives reproduce faster and consume their resources, like the algae, at a faster rate because they have to repopulate quickly when their alewife predators migrate back to the lakes and become a threat. So, what did we learn from all this? The whole purpose of examining the Daphnia in these lakes was to discuss the cascade of evolutionary change, which simply means the evolutionary interactions between different trophic levels, or levels of the food chain. These interactions alter the community and ecosystem that the organism lives in because, as one link in the food chain changes, the organisms around it must evolve to counteract the shift in the change. In the context of the experiment, the life history evolution of the Daphnia water flea caused changes in the rate of population growth based on the environment of the particular community of Daphnia. These changes in growth rates influences the phytoplankton who also reside in the link and how the ecosystem functions as a whole. Okay, so let's make a visual representation of all this. I have two graphs here. Um, the y-axis on both is the number of Daphnia and the x-axis is time, which goes to um, exactly one year. And this graph is representing Daphnia that come from Andromis alewife lakes. And this graph represents one the lakes that have no alewives or landlocked alewives. So, in Walsh's study, they found the algae from the lakes, the mesocosms from the lakes with Andromis alewives, um, in the days 8 to 20 of the experiment, the densities disappeared 41 to 42 percent faster than from the lakes with no or landlocked Daphnia. Now, over the entire course of 40 days of the experiment, um, the algal densities were roughly the same. So, because we also know that the Daphnia from the lakes with anadromous alewives um, reduce much faster, they have a life cycle that's more like this, and the ones that come from landlocked or no alcohol lakes come like this. Now, this is because of the carrying capacity that we learned about in class, which comes in right about here. And since we all know that we fluctuate above and below the carrying capacity, the, the Daphnia that come from anadromous alewife lakes fluctuate above and below their carrying capacity much faster because they're used, they have adapted to having to repopulate much quickly when the alewives come in from the ocean. But the Daphnia from the no alewife or landlocked lakes have the same population growth all over the entire year and just fluctuate with the seasons. If the Daphnia of different lakes and fish presence were to change ecosystems, there would be a massive disruption in the ecosystem. Say, for example, a small group of the Daphnia from the lakes containing migratory alewaves was to be transported to a landlocked wave with alewaves. <laughs> the higher reproduction rate of the foreign Daphnia would cause overpopulation and a rapid decline in algae, 
digging up the available resources. There are two chains of events that would occur in one lake ecosystem. To boil this down to one point, genetic variation and evolution of one member of a community affects all other members. Not only does cascade evolution occur directly between species, but this evolution can transfer from biotic to abiotic and back to biotic factors. Cardinal and his team of scientists showed that the increasing the diversity of in suspension feeders in streams increased the removal of suspended particulate matter and increased the stream flow velocity. Altering these factors influence the other organisms downstream as well as the environment through erosion. Now, how does this relate to what we've been learning in class? Obviously, the relationships between the levels that an ecosystem can be broken into, such as organisms, populations, and communities, and when a species diversifies, it affects the communities and ecosystems in which it resides and interacts. The study is also related to ecology and predator-prey interactions. In this study, presence of a migrating predator, the alewife, affects the breeding patterns of the Daphnium phytoplankton. The study also focuses on the evolution of the Daphnia due to the evolution of the alewives. The final important ecological point is that ecology and evolution are related. Generally speaking, evolutionary change can impact an entire ecosystem and food web.